Look what I got. See? It's another beautiful day in paradise. It's a Wednesday, I think, and today we've slept in until we were done. We can do that since we're retired. There are no alarm clocks here. Not since living in the wilderness full time at our homestead and off-grid cabin on our 40 acres here in Ontario, Canada. We've been on a Canadian backroads wilderness canoe adventure, recording the sounds of the deep wilderness on backwoods, lakes, and rivers, recording from our canoe all night long. We're far away from any highway traffic, or trains, or any man-made noise. And as we've been recording wolves and loons and all kinds of wilderness sounds, it really gives one pause to reflect what a beautiful, beautiful country we live in. And now we're driving the back roads and logging trails, looking for new adventures. And we're finding new locations and places for vamping. That's camping from our van. You can check out the full adventure right here. We're really excited to be exploring these remote locations where GPS just doesn't work here, so it helps when one knows how to read a map. You know, a paper map? Does anyone do that anymore? <laughs> Hey guys, so we're out walking the trail today and we decided we're going to uh, set the microphones out on uh, this part and we'll, uh, we'll show you the way this the way this works and what we've got for a setup. This is just a uh, kind of, I don't know what kind of a sack this is or what it's for. It's a canoeing sack. I got it from a canoeing outfitter company. It's rubberized or something on the bottom to be right. waterproof. And, then, and, and I sprayed it. I sprayed the whole thing with uh, silicone uh, spray to keep the water out. And we've got, of course, a, a coffee can as a protector, and uh, works works okay. Uh, power pack that we have to power the system, the recorder, and what I've got here is. So you can see it. I, I've got some coat hanger that I made this globe a mesh with and put the uh, pantyhose over top of that. That acts as a wind protector and then of course this, this cover acts as a rain protector and the microphone is actually inside the capsule so you see it's protected by this by the metal cage here inside the seat. And so that protects the microphone and I've got another mini coffee can with duct tape and wire and uh, I've got some wire here and duct tape and that lid just pulls over to um, fasten it clamp it on there and then here's uh, the microphone and the, the digital recorder itself so basically what I've done is I've I've got the steel cage to protect it from bear animals that are trying to investigate it and bite it and that kind of a thing. We've got the wind protector on it, we've got the rain protection on it, um, and we can set her on record and I can lock the controls so once it's set it's uh, ready to go and, and uh, autopilot. So. Check two. All right, all systems go. We got a mosquito on your cheek. There we go. Locked, loaded, and record. Boom! It's got a drawstring on it here, which is really handy. Locked up from the bottom. Bungee cord from the top. Wrap that around a tree. There we go. So for the folks that were curious, how do we do our wilderness recording? This is how we do it. Now that I have the recorder all set, I'm in the basic environment where I know I want to record. 
Now what I'm looking for is a specific locality or a specific habitat with which to record. So I'm looking for geography, geographic features like rock, walls, faces, uh, um, the wilderness, rolling hills, wetlands, open areas, um, that kind of a thing. And so I'll record wherever the best area presents itself. And so let's, uh, let's go exploring on the trail here and we shall see what kind of habitat we can, we can uh, locate today. It may just be for birds, maybe for the wolves, could be for both. Um, let's see what we, let's see what we get. Nice. There's a nice camp spot. Some wolf scat right there. So on this part of the trail, um, we have an opening here in the bush, which is really nice. Um, and you can see there's a couple treetops. If you pan to the tips of the treetops, there's one over here on the left. There's another one in the middle. There's another one to the right of that. And there's this tree here, which are all good singing posts. They're all good singing posts uh, in the morning and in the evening for birds. So not only do we have the opening where the sound, we can pick up the sound from uh, all these singing posts, but we can also hear the wolves at night should they call from uh, from the forest here. What's the significance of singing posts? Like you said, these trees are singing posts. Well, they they choose trees to make their territorial calls and mating calls. So they'll choose certain trees that offer them the best advantage from their call reaching out to a further distance, and hence when you have a clearing and stuff like this, it helps. And um, it helps them to be seen because it's a tree tip of a treetop that the other birds can then see as well, right? Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna place this microphone now that it's all rolling, everything is uh, rocking and rolling. I'm gonna place it over on by one of these trees. So let's go do that. So what I'm doing is. I know that the microphone capsule left and the right is the left is here on this side, the right is here because this is my label. So that's how I know that inside that's the way the directionality of the microphone uh, is recording. So what I'm going to do is I want to pick up the singing posts to be left, right, and in the middle. So there's some there. I'm going to make the mic face this way. So this is the right over here, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to the tree without doing anything to the tree itself, and just wrapping that around itself with the bungee cord so it hooks on it and then catches on the branch. And then what I do over here is any leaves that could blow and rattle on the shell of the microphone that that'll get picked up really easy so i'll just take those out i don't try not to tear them out or break them out of the way or anything just move them out of the way so that they don't so that they don't do that anymore hook for this string and help just to keep it in place there So 
So there's the microphone and you can see that it's situated so it'll pick up the sing posts and we may hear the wolves. We shall see what we hear over the next while. And we'll come back in a couple days and we'll pick this up. In the meantime, I think we'll continue on with our walk. It's a beautiful trail. Look at the berries here, Maureen. Young choke cherry? Yeah, they look like choke cherry. Like young cho choke cherry berries. Lots of them. Beautiful. Well, I think that we should, uh, the microphone's just over there to the right. So we should be able to, the birds may be coming for their berries. Uh, or the bears. Nice spot. Beautiful. I know, right? <laughs> Look what I got. Look at that, I got some berries for the birds. It's not too often that we find an apple tree in the wilderness. Apple pie on the trail, anyone? Apple bumble crumble. Wild apple bumble crumble. <laughs> we'll have to remember that this tree is here. Wow, as you can hear and see, these old back roads, they're not for the faint of heart. Poor old Bessie, she doesn't owe us a dime. It's been a long day. We're both tired. We're going to head back to the campsite, grab ourselves a quick bite to eat, and call it an early night. And we'll see you guys in the morning, or as Glenn says, by the crack of noon. <laughs> We're both retired after all.
Good morning. <laughs> Coffee. Fruit salad, kiwi, oranges, apples. So what do you got on the go? Well, I've got some Cabin Life Apple Bumble Crumble cooking up for breakfast. And then I plan on lounging around the campsite for the day. Well, since Maureen decided to stay back at camp with Jake and domesticate, I decided to go off into the wilderness and take my third recorder with me to record some soundscapes and perhaps leave the mic at a location overnight for a day or two even, and uh, since we were already uh, in the area camping. Another beautiful day, just fantastic. 
And I've been walking out in the bush here for a little while now and uh, tying off some pink ribbons and whatnot along the way so I can get back to our campsite. This is really nice uh, to get to uh, this neck of the woods and uh, down yet another logging road that branched off to another section that went in another well, quite a long ways. And uh, not the smoothest road, but uh, nonetheless. I'll show you what we got going here, guys. Uh, I'm out in the bush recording, and I told you guys that we'd take you along on our excursions. So uh, here it is, yet another uh, recording session that I'm going to be doing, and out in the middle of the Canadian wilderness. I'll show you my recorder. This is the Zoom H2. It records not only in stereo, but in four-channel stereo. It records also um, 5.1 surround sound, uh, theater sound as well. So because it has a, a microphone uh, in all uh, four locations here in, in the quadrant, front and rear microphones, stereo mics. So this catches fantastic stereo imagery. It's got very good clarity to it. I'll plug my headphones in. I've got several pair of headphones as well that do various jobs. They do a pretty good job of, of uh, isolating the sound uh, away from that. And I put a little red dot on, on one side of the headphones so, so that I know what left and right is just at a glance. And there's my right side. There we go. So I plug the headphones in and uh, Fire the microphone up. Hit record. And that fits inside of my coffee can. Got foam inside. And the microphone, by the way, has a wind cap, wind sock. Um, and this is also a wind sock here. So it's got double wind protection. This offers a little bit of weather protection. Doesn't look like we're in for any rain today at this point. So, and I'm out walking with the mic and I'll just leave it for a few hours today and, and go to another location later on. So put the wind sock on, recorder is rolling. And now, now as I walk through the forest, I can, maneuver the microphone as I listen to hone in on different birds. So onward. So I can record with it like this, just in the bag. I can walk with it like this as I, as I venture onto the, my new location. So come on, let's go see what we can record today. I am not walking under that.
So that's basically um, one of the methods that I use to capture my wilderness sounds. And uh, depending on what I'm going for and where I am. And uh, nice to have you come along with us today on our excursion. Well, that trail is a little bit rougher than the uh, than the previous trail uh, that little, we yeah from yesterday. A little bit, eh? Yeah. Ah, uh, but we made it, and we're a little bit further in, or a lot further in. Yeah. Anyway, it was a nice day today. Another nice one. Yeah, how would you make out? with doing the microphones, setting them out. I set the one out and then I uh, I set the recorder out in a couple different places. Just walked through the bush. I set my little red ribbon breadcrumb lying behind me. Yes, so while you were gone I enjoyed some lounging around time, tied it up inside the van a bit. Enjoyed looking around here. And Jake finally settled down. <laughs> slept all day, the rest of the day. Oh, well, he slept some of the day. We're still exploring and looking around. He's kind of tuckered out now, though. Well, that was good. I'm going to go gather up a little bit of firewood and uh, we'll get that ready. And while you do that, I'll get supper ready. Hey. Hey. What you doing? Oh, I was just gonna get the cream.
back to those days when we were younger and we would just venture off into the woods with our tent and our camping gear. And yeah, it take us about just a couple hours to pack the stuff that we want. And it uh, seems like these days it takes a couple days to pack the stuff you want. <laughs> but we had unlimited energy back then. We could travel light and we could travel fast. And uh, of course, back then it was a uh, different mode of transportation altogether, but we didn't have the van for backwoods vamping. But uh, no, it's nice having the van. Um, as you were mentioning uh, the other night, it's just nice to be able to be inside the van, a hard shell. When you're out in uh, bear country, um, you know, it's just added. A little bit of added insurance, uh, that la extra layer of safety, right? So it makes you sleep a little better, I guess. But. Well, I think it helps me sleep better. That's a very nice fire. Wow. Well, I have done a lot of, actually we've both done a lot of tent camping. Sleeping on the hard cold ground. Um, I've done some, uh, some camping just under the stars without sleeping in a tent. Sleeping on a uh, bare flat rock on the edge of a lake. And uh, that was a nice experience. As I recall, it was a, a moonless night, so it was pitch black, but the stars were out and uh, the Milky Way was just so prevalent, so easy to see, just really nice. Hey, Jakey, what you up to? Being a real good boy. I heard you roaming in the bush. Yeah, he was. Yeah. You know, uh, wandering around those little bushes. Did you find any raspberries? Hmm? So we are keeping Jake on the leash and a chain um, while he's got you know freedom to roam around a little bit. He has been on the scent of uh, as we've changed our camping locations. Um, just the last few days, uh, the first few days we didn't have Jake with us because we were in the canoe on the water. Uh, but uh, now that we picked Jake up and, and uh, he's coming uh, vamping with us and whatnot, it's, um, he has been on the scent of, on the trail of things. As soon as he gets out of the van, he wants to go. Just puts his nose down on the ground, picks up the scent of something and he just wants to go into the bush. So I don't know uh, at what point he would, you know, give up on that and, and come come back. So um, for his own safety and security, we have both decided that it's best for him not to be running wild and running free as much as we would like him to be able to do that. Um, we just think that his instincts would kick over, kick in, and uh, would take over the better of him. So for that reason we are keeping him close by there's you know there's deer that he can track moose uh there's wolves that can track him there's bear so but you know he probably smells a rabbit or something like that and wants to go and you know trail you know track it so
Well, it was nice out in the woods today. Cheers to a good day. Cheers. Hmm, good coffee. Well, it was great sharing this wilderness recording adventure with you all, and there's a lot more adventures to follow. In fact, check out the full Canadian Backroads Wilderness Adventure Series right here. And please consider subscribing, and remember to click on that notification bell so that you don't miss anything. And that's all for now. I'm Glenn. I'm Maureen. See you next time. Over and out. Take care. Mm -hmm.